Hi, welcome to Budget MTG Decks. All magic fun, all cards under a dollar. I'm David. I'm Stefan. And today we're going to be evaluating all the black cards in Guilds of Ravnica. You can evaluate them for limited, like draft and sealed. Like your upcoming pre-release, where you got five regular booster packs and one seeded booster of your guild of your choice. Yeah, and we're going to be evaluating all these cards according to our three-tiered system. Tier 1 cards, these are super powerful, these are our unconditional removal, these are our bombs, these would be the cards that are going to be winning us the game. Tier 2 cards, these are also very good, auto-inclusive already in that color, and otherwise, uh, if we've got a couple of these, it's going to push us into that color. And the Tier 3 cards, these are our filler cards. These cards are not particularly spectacular, but they are okay to play, and they do fill out our mana curve to make sure that we have uh, uh, the right card drops at the right point in time of the game. The rest of the cards are either too bad or too situational, so we're going to put those aside. So let's have a look right now at the comments. Let's start black off with Vicious Rumors. A black sorcery, Vicious Rumors deals 1 damage to each opponent, each opponent discards a card and then puts the top card of the library into the graveyard, you gain 1 life. It doesn't really do anything on the board, discarding 1 card that they can choose and late game it doesn't do anything and milling might actually help them and then 1 life is not really relevant. No. So it doesn't actually do enough. Just put it aside. Exactly. Next card, Barrier of Bones. For one black, it's a 0-3 skeleton wall with defender. And when this guy enters the battlefield, we're going to survey one. Now, we do like to survey, so that's nice. But a 0-3, we've already discussed this before. These walls, these defenders, they just they don't uh, impact the game enough. And they don't stop your opponent from attacking into you. So that's why, even though it is cheap, and sure, it can block a 2-2, a for example. And yes, the survey is okay, it does not warrant the inclusion, the card slot that you are using to put this card in. So just put it aside. Next one is Hired Poisoner. It's a black, it's a 1-1 one, one human assassin with that touch. We really like our 1-1 one, one that touches and this is for one, so that's really nice. It will always trade up. Yeah, it's, it's basically one of my favorite uh, black cards to be able to play uh, at common because it's just, as Stefan said, it always trades up and it's so versatile. People don't want to attack into you. And you can attack, you can also just use it to attack people. You usually don't want to block it either. So it's just, it's, I really love uh, uh, very small creatures with death touch. Exactly. So tier two always wants to play this. Dead weight is up next for a single black. It's an enchantment aura and it gives the enchanted creature minus two, minus two. So essentially, this is very good removal. It's basically the same as if we would say uh, deal two damage uh, to a creature sorcery speed. Basically, the same thing. Sure, this gets around indestructible. It's not going to be very relevant. But yeah, this is very solid. Tier two, I would always include it if I'm in black. Also, if you play it on like any creature, which makes it easier to block and um, mitigate their damage output. So that's also really nice. Yeah. Child of Night, one in a black. It's a 2-1 vampire with lifelink. Tier 3, decent filler. I don't really like the one toughness, but with two power and lifelink, I think it's a decent filler. Yeah, absolutely. Don't feel bad about playing this one, I think. Uh, Burglar Rat is up next for one in a black. It's a 1-1 one, one rat, and when it enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. Now, we've had these cards uh, before that either uh, only one opponent discards a card or everybody has to discard a card. Uh, this one does uh, it for all the opponents, which makes it more interesting for Commander. However, in Limited, uh, I don't think it's going to be enough also because when you want people to discard stuff you either want them to discard multiple cards or you want them to discard a specific card and this one does neither one of those two so I, I don't think that's enough. Yeah and the body isn't really relevant enough to warrant his inclusion. Severed Strands, one and a black sorcery as additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature and you gain life equal to the sacrifice creature's toughness which isn't really that relevant but destroy target creature and opponent consoles. That is very relevant. I don't want to put it in tier 2 because you have to sacrifice a creature of your own and it is unconditional removal but I want to put it in tier 3 because it's still really good removal but you have to 2 for 1 yourself. You have to sacrifice a creature, you have to play this card and then you can unconditional remove anything else. I think if you're searching for removal this is still a card you're looking for. Yeah, uh, I would say what what really uh, keeps it out of the tier two territory for me is the fact that it's sorcery speed. Because if you would be able, if it would be instant speed and somebody would attack, you could block with a creature. 
you don't take the damage and then you sack it to kill another creature then you're doing you're doing so much more even mm -hmm. though you did also lose a creature but the sorcery speed really hurts it in that sense but yeah sometimes i mean sometimes we also have uh, uh removal that costs six seven mana or something we just sometimes you just need to play it even though it's over costed and this is a kind of the same story mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Mephetic Vapors for two and a black. So for three mana, it's a sorcery. All creatures get minus one, minus one till the end of turn. And uh, survey two. Look at the top two cards. And then, of course, we're going to either keep them there or move them around or put them into the graveyard. I'm going to put this one aside as well. When, you, when it comes to um, doing uh, board wipe damage or reducing power and toughness or something like that, what you want to do is you want to do at least two damage or give minus two, minus two in this case. Minus one, minus one is just not going to hit enough stuff to make it worth it. And it's also, again, not instant speed. So we can't really use it as a combat trick to make sure that we really blow them out. So because of those reasons, I would put this one aside. Exactly. If you do find yourself with an um, opponent that has a lot of X1s, then you can th still think, you know, game two, game three, I will take this out and I will play it. So that's also something you have to remember when you um, when we evaluate these cards as a side if it's relevant then you can still play them yeah because it's just really situational felt shade it's a two and a black it's a two two shade and for one and black felt shade get plus one plus one until end of turn it's already a two two for three which is a bit overcosted but i think i'm pretty okay with it and with this ability, I really love those abilities always because you can bluff with it. And if you um, attack with it, and they're like, oh, I can't really um, block because then they will die. Then you can still not use your mana to, and then play something else, which is what I really like about this one. So tier three, good filler. Yeah, another good example is the cards are good when they're good early, good late. Now this one, when it's early, let's say on turn three you cast this, on turn four you can attack if you didn't miss your land drop. You can attack with a 4-4 four, four, essentially, so that's good early. Late game, it comes in, you got tons of mana, you know what, bam, I'm just going to make it a 10-10. <laughs> Doesn't even matter. What I, kind of mana do you have? I don't know. Anyway, the point is you can make it really big, let's say 6-6 six, six, realistically. Uh, then then you, it's also doing great work, so that's why it's good in all stages of the game. Next, Spinal Centipede for two and a black. So for three mana, it, the art is awesome on this uh, on this centipede. We get a three two insect, so the body is fine for the power for the for the mana cost. So I'm already happy with that. And when it dies, we're gonna put a plus one plus one kind of on target creature control. This is tier three filler, but it's so incredibly good. I think this is top of the line filler card. Why? Because it uh, it it deals decent amounts of damage. Uh, it could trade up, but additionally, people don't really want to kill it because then you could put that plus one plus one counter on your evasion creature, on your flyer, on your menace creature, or whatever, and then that thing becomes so much of a th so, so, so much bigger of a threat at that point in time as well. So actually, I think I would take this very highly in the filler category. Yeah, it's just really nice because it has those the three uh, power, which means it does a lot of damage, and. We're actually happy with it without the second ability. And then it just has that ability, which is makes it so much better. Hmm. Because the counter just stays on uh, on the creature, and that is so important. Next one is Never Happened. One, uh, one, two, and a black. It's a sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose an online card from that player's graveyard or hand and exile it. We don't really like a card removal and stuff like that, so I don't think it's relevant to get also get something out of the graveyard. So just gonna say, put it aside. Yeah, it's uh, the problem with these kind of effects is that uh, early game, sure, you might be able to hit their bomb. It could be they didn't draw their bomb yet, so you got to get something else. And the the thing is later on, it could be that they don't have any cards in hand, and then you really have then this card really not doing anything. Uh, Bartisan Bats is next for three and a black. So for four mana, it's a 3-1 flying bat. Now, it's got evasion, which is sweet, and it does tons of damage, which is why I would pick it very highly as tier two. I always love my flyers that do at least two damage. Uh, this one's a little bit more expensive and the toughness is low, but in the end, you know what, if flyers clash, they usually kill each other anyway. So I don't think, I don't think it makes such a huge difference whether it's a 3-1 or a 3-2. Uh, so I, I would still always play this one in black. Yeah, 
I'm always just really sad to see like one toughness flyers and it makes me very wary, but with three power in the air, I think that's worth it to try that. And I think one toughness hurts uh, land creatures more than flying creatures. Yeah. Because there's no, you know, there's no uh, um, spirits uh, tokens no. or something in this set. Maybe, yeah, but also um, it's really difficult because all the small um, damage things, it's really, um, because land creatures can be blocked always and then those small damage things is really more important for those flyers so i don't know if it makes it a lot better than on a land creature which small damage thing are you talking like about? like dead weight or stuff like that so it's only a couple um, but those are all do uh damage too at yeah, least so, yeah. so i don't think it, that's why i don't think i think anything that would kill this thing would also kill a two toughness creature which people yeah. are playing maybe maybe Still, one toughness, it just feels really bad. I think it'll still do work. Moonmark Painter, two and two black. It's a two, three human shaman with undergrowth. And when Moonmark Painter enters battlefield, target creature gets, um, wow. Target creature gains menace and gets plus X, plus zero until the end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. This first time we see undergrowth, and that's what we talked about before. When you get some small stuff in your graveyard with surveyors, creatures, like, uh, creatures um, it just gets better and better. But in limited, it's really difficult because um, there are a lot of times where you don't have any creatures in your graveyard, yeah. and it won't do anything. But for four mana, two, three, it's overcosted. But I think giving something menace and maybe pumping it up, I think it's good enough to warrant this in a tier three. Yeah, even if you don't have any creatures, it still gives the menace. So you're still you're doing something that turn. Uh, Dowser of Lights is up next for four and a black. So for five mana, it's a four five vanilla horror. It doesn't do anything else. It is still filler though. I mean that four power and five times means that it is really actually quite a solid threat on the battlefield. And there's not a lot of stuff that can tangle with it in combat. So yes, it may be vanilla. You may think, yeah, I want my creatures to do stuff, but I, and also the fact that it's only one one black, so you can always splash something like this. It is, uh, it, I think it will do work. But yeah. still just filler, though. Yeah, it is just a solid creature. Yeah. The last common is Deadly Visit. For three and two black, sorcery, destroy target creature, which is already good enough. But while we're here, we can just tag a little more on it, which surveil two. Survey. Survey. Yeah. Tier 1, Unconditional Removal, these are the cards you're looking for. If I see those things, I'm thinking maybe I should play black because removal is so important and limited. Yeah, and this is just as unconditional as it gets. Yeah. Amazing. And there's upside to it, so I'm happy. Exactly. Those are the commons. Let's have a look at the uncommons. The first of our uncommon cards is Pilfering Imp for a single black. It's a 1-1 one, one flyer. Now, we already discussed this in the white cards that we don't like our 1-1 flyers for one because they just don't do enough. The additional uh, ability of this creature is for one in a black and tapping it and sacrificing it. We're going to make sure that target opponent reveals their hand and we're going to dis uh, we're going to choose a non-land card from their hand and they're going to have to discard that card. We can only do that at uh, uh, sorcery speed. Yes, that sounds like a lot of fun. It, it suffers from two problems. One is the power and toughness for the mana cost and the ability uh, of the uh, looking into your opponent's hand and discarding a card. You may think I'm doing both, so maybe that's good enough. I still don't think that it's going to be doing enough work. And that's why I would say put this card aside. And also you have to do the sorcery speed, plus you have to wait until it has, doesn't have summoning sickness anymore. So I don't think all these things Against it? No, just put it aside. Yeah. Next one is Necrotic Wound. A black instant undergrowth target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. I think it's a tier 3 because, like I always said before, it will most likely not really do much in the early stage of the game, but later in the game, it will do more and more, which makes it interesting, but that means the smaller stuff, early game, you can't deal with them. So also not a tier two, not an all auto include, but if you need some removal, this is still pretty good. Yeah, just expect it to be able to kill a two toughness creature, for example, and don't really expect much more than yeah. that. And then black instant speed for one mana, I it think that's okay. pretty good. It should be okay, yeah. 
Uh, Whispering Snitch is up next for one on a black. So for two mana, it's a 1-3 a Vampire Rogue. And whenever you survey for the first time each turn, this creature is going to deal one damage to each opponent. And you gain one life. Now, we're not going to be surveying constantly. If we get it, do it once or twice, sure, we get a couple of points of damage. We gain a couple of points of life. That's not really relevant. The point is that it's for two mana, a 1-3. And that is actually very good on curve and an okay filler. And then the next one is Playcrafter. Two and a black, it's a 3-2 human shaman. And when he enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker, each player who can't, discards a card. Which means you always get a card. Unless the opponent doesn't have any planeswalkers, any creatures, or no cards in hand, then why are you actually playing this one? Yeah, it doesn't matter that you're winning the game anyway. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, this will always get you a card which is really relevant you can sacrifice this one to act as a removal or you can sacrifice a smaller thing and it's a 3-2 for 3 which are pretty decent tier 2 i always want to play this absolutely very strong price of fame is up next for three and a black so for four mana it's an instant uh, it states destroy target creature uh we also get to survey two and additionally, it costs two less if you use it to target a legendary creature. Now, this is absolutely redonkulous. <laughs> Tier one, you if you if you pull this card, you're like, I guess I'm playing black for sure. And then we'll see what else we're playing because this is absolutely amazing. The fact that it's uh, not only is unconditional removal, but also with the survey two, which actually kind of counts as a card draw, as we discussed already in the previous video. Uh, Sure, if you target a legendary, it's going to be only for two mana. Don't even don't even worry about that. Four mana, instant speed, unconditional removal with upside is just yeah, as good as it gets. Yeah, and there's only one black in that, so it's so easy to splash to begin with. <sighs> yeah, it's Amazing. so nice. Instant speed too. Beautiful. On the city, Necrolisk. Three and a black. It's a 3-3 three, three zombie lizard. Mwah, okay. One mana, sacrifice another creature, put a plus one plus one counter on, on the city Nicholas, it gains menace until end of turn, active ability or any time you could cast a sorcery. I don't really like that second one, but it makes the first, uh, uh, the second class that you have to do with a sorcery speed, but giving menace makes it better because you means you have to use it and then attack. I think this is pretty good. I think I always want to play this because it keeps on going, because it gets the counter. You can sacrifice your smaller stuff to give it menace and grow it. And it will be insane after a while, even after one or two activations. Yeah, I would say even just, uh, let's say on turn four, you play this and turn five, you're going to sacrifice your two, two for two that you had before. Now, all of a sudden you're attacking with a four, four menace on turn five. Yeah. and. After after that, it's a, um, f a five five minutes, which does it can't be stopped. No, it's absolutely amazing. The evasion really takes it over the edge. Uh, if it wouldn't have the menace on there, I would probably just put it in as a filler. However, uh, if it would then again be able to activate this instant speed, then it would once again be turn two because it's nice that you can use it to protect, uh, well, not to protect, but to make sure that you get some value out of the stuff that gets removed. So even Bad. still with the sorcery speed. Really good. Tier two, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Creeping Chill is next for three and a black. So for four mana, it's a sorcery. It's going to deal three damage to each opponent, and you gain three life. And additionally, when this card is put into the graveyard from the library, you may exile it. And if you do, it basically does that same ability again. Okay, this is terrible. You're uh, you're only doing three damage. You're gaining life. It costs you a card. You don't impact the board. It's sorcery speed. It's just everything about this is terrible. Maybe the worst card in the set. What do you think? Probably not the worst card in the set, but it's up there. Yeah, really bad. Don't play it. Qual Swarm is the next one. Four and a black. It's a 4-1 Insect Warrior with flying. Like I said, I don't really like my 4-1s. For five mana, it's no, I don't think so. But for two and a black, discard a creature card, return Qual Swarm from your graveyard to your hand which makes it actually more interesting for me because then for three mana you can um, later in the game discard any bad creature to get this less, less bad, bad. <laughs> creature. <laughs> but it has evasion and yeah. it and when it died it probably took the evasion and uh, the flying creature with it which means 
you can keep on getting it back, killing all the flyers, and then you have a full one in the air. Yeah. And I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Usually strong powered uh, flyers are tier two because they really do so much work. Uh, however, this one, it's just it just doesn't have enough of that to bring it uh, to bring it to the tier two level because of the cost, because of the toughness, and because of the fact that you need to discard a creature card and not like that you wouldn't be able to discard like an extra land that you don't mm -hmm. need. Those things would have been changed. It would have gone from uh, from actually, if it would have more toughness, be able to discard a, a land for example as well, uh, and it would have been maybe a little bit cheaper than it would have been tier one. You but, can bring it to tier yeah, one. Yeah, like but then we changed the whole card. We changed the entire card. We changed the entire card. I'm just saying, like on all the levels which you could measure it, it's just not not really great. It's not good enough, and no. that's why it's still a tier three because it's still a high powered flyer, and it can still come back. But you need to jump to some hoops for it. I think it's still a filler card. Yeah, you still not really unhappy to see this. Only a little bit. Exactly. Then we come to the last of the uncommons, and that is Lotleth Giant for six and a black so for seven mana. It is a six-five zombie giant with undergrowth, which means when it enters the battlefield, we're going to look at the number of creature cards in our graveyard, and then we're going to deal one damage to each opponent for each of those cards. Um, this is tier three. It's filler for your late game. I think it's pretty expensive. There's no way. There's no cost reduction. No convoke on this thing to make it cheaper. Uh, uh, sure, it has high power and high toughness, but on stuff like this, you actually want Menace, you want uh, Trample, you want Flying, you want something to make it a bomb. This just doesn't make it into a bomb. Uh, so that's why, again, filler card, if you really don't have anything which is large and in charge with Evasion, then this could take up that slot. But, you know, it also doesn't deal a lot of damage. Also, not too happy seeing this. Yeah. I like this a lot. I like this not a lot better, but I do like this more than David does because it's still a big creature. Seven mana is really difficult, but I like having some reach for the last couple of damage because people will like block and try to survive. And then you put this on the table and you do that three damage that you really needed. It's situational, I know, but sometimes you really need these cards. It's still not a tier two for me because it's so expensive. Yeah. So tier three, I think it's still a decent filler. Yeah. Well, those are the uncommons. Let's have a look at the rares. Our first rare is Mausoleum Secrets. One in a black, instant, undergrowth. Search a library for a black card with confirmed mana cost less than or less than or equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Reveal it, put it in your hand, and then shuffle your library. We can search for any black card in your in library but it has but you have to have a lot of creatures in your graveyard which means you're gonna search up something for two mana if you're lucky yeah and is it good enough then and i don't think so just put it aside it's really nice for constructed but in limited no yeah, when you in limited when you want a tutor, your tutor card essentially becomes a second copy of either your bomb or your unconditional removal. And the problem is your bombs and your unconditional removal are probably going to be six, five, maybe four converted mana cost, and not lower than that. And you're basically not going never going to be able to search for this. And we're playing in a multicolored set, which means the chances of it also being black, the card that you need is also slightly reduced, especially if you're playing something like three colors, which you what you should be doing. Well, if we're playing a multicolored set then the card um, being black is actually increased. If you're only playing mono black, it's a 100% chance. Yeah, but if you play... If every color you add, you're going to have less That's black. true, but we have hybrid cards. That's what I mean. That's true. I, I just don't think... Well, regardless, <laughs> even if you would have a bomb and removal, which is black, then uh, you still won't be able to hit that converted mana yeah, cost requirement. You just don't want to play this because no. you, um, if you don't really have like four creatures in your graveyard, then it's a dead card because you don't want to search off for something that's two mana. Yeah, terrible. Card that's not terrible, Midnight Reaper for two and a black. So for three mana, it is a three two zombie knight. I already like the body uh, for the cost. And additionally, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, it's gonna deal one damage to you and you're gonna draw a card. This is absolutely sick immediately tier two if you're in black this is auto include you just play because we're playing a lot of creatures in limited uh and uh 
even regardless, even if we would have some token stuff, we're still going to be playing regular creatures anyways. Not like your deck's going to be 100% tokens. There's no way you can build something like that. So this card's always going to give you value. The one damage is irrelevant, and the card draw is going to be absolutely insane. So that is tier two. Always play this in black. Blood Operative is the next one. One and two black. It's a tier one vampire assassin with lifelink. Two, um, two mana, two power. Okay, sure. Lifelink, pretty decent. And when he enters the battlefield, you may exile a card from a graveyard, which is irrelevant. When, whenever you survey, if Blood Operative is in your graveyard, you may pay 3 life if you do return Blood Operative to your hand. I like this one a lot better than the Crawl Swarm because it's an, a, just an extra thing you get with, with when you survey and you want to survey. And for 3 mana, 3 mana lifelink, I think that's pretty decent. Also, the paying a life is mitigated by the lifelink. Yeah. So all in all, I think this card is really good. Tier 2, I think I always want to play this. I know I don't like my one toughness, but I want to try this one out. Yeah, especially because you, you, it doesn't cost you a card to get it back. Yeah. And you want to be surveying anyway in these colors. So I, I definitely think even if you only got a couple of instances... Is there a chance that you may not be able to get it back? Sure, but then mm -hmm. you still were able to probably kill something with this, trade with it, and gain the three lives. So I think it's definitely... Uh, I think okay. that's really important. Also, we'll probably have like one or two survey cards at least. And then just having that idea that you can get it back late in the game, just the additional value, I'm always happy. Yeah. I'm always happy with value. It's very nice. Ritual of Suit is up next for two and two blacks. So for four mana, it's a sorcerer. We're going to destroy all creatures with converted mana cost of three or less. Now, normally, board wipes hit everything. That's tier one, you know. Uh, however, this one is tier two because it's more conditional. It only hits the smaller creatures and the tokens. Still, though, that's still very, very strong. Very, very solid. You can play around this as well if you know you got it in the deck. You can especially play around it if you already, if you get it in your hand early because you just, you know, you're not going to be playing those smaller creatures. Your opponent thinks, ah, oh, they're not drawing their stuff. They're playing all their things and then bam, you wipe them. Uh, I think that's very strong. I would always play it in black. I think, still think you kind of need to play a little bit um, on the earlier turns. Or are you going to survive on turn four without doing anything? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Depends how, how many creatures they play. You still should play a couple things. Okay. But don't dump your hand out and then wipe your own board. No. Next one is Gruesome Menagerie. Three and two black. It's a sorcery. Choose a creature card. Put Confirm Marcos. One in your graveyard. Then do the same creature cards with Confirm Marcos. Two and three. Return those cards to the battlefield. Reanimation. You get three creatures. It's great. Only if you have a confirmed mana cost 1, 2, and 3, which will probably not have a confirmed mana cost 1 creature, so that's irrelevant. Then for 5 mana, getting a back confirmed mana cost 2 and 3 creature, is that good enough? And I don't think so, because you first need to have it, and if you don't, it's not really going to do anything, because then you maybe target one thing, which is a 2, 2 for 2, and you paid 5 mana to get that back. Yeah. So just... Put aside, it's really cool card, but it's not gonna do anything. Now, these kind of return cards back from your graveyard to your hand or to the battlefield, you want to use these for your bombs. And essentially, this one excludes that because uh, your bombs aren't going to be converted to cost one or two or three. Exactly. All right, that is it for the rares. Let's have a look at the mythic. The only black mythic we have is Doom Whisper for three and two black. So for five mana, we get a six six flying trampler now there is nothing in the air that's bigger than this this thing has got the double evasion essentially with the flying and the trample and for a measly five mana this is insane if you were able to play this on five on turn five that it's pretty much game over and additionally we can pay two mana two mana two life and to survey two now that is also ridiculous. That's almost as if we would say, okay, for just another two life, we could we could draw a card. Essentially what it says, that's the value that we're getting from that. And we're going to be digging, throwing stuff in our graveyard, bam, bam, bam. It's going to get us right to the next bomb or, or unconditional removal. This card, if unanswered, wins the game, period. Tier one, the best of the best. I don't really have anything to add to this. It's such a good card. It's amazing. Yeah, you it's, really want to see this, huh? Yeah, I... I'm always too happy to see this, but I think anyone would. Yeah, except if it's across from the table. So that is it for the Mythic. 
let's have a look at the conclusion. In conclusion, I really like black. We have some really good unconditional removal. We have some high powered flyers and we have some really, really solid fillers. I think that's all really important to have a strong, solid color. Yeah, as we've discussed already before in our how to pick your guild mechanic, uh, I feel that uh, Demir is very strong. I feel like Ugar is very strong. What do they have in common? Black. I think the black colors are the the black color is extremely strong in this set. And as Stefan already said, you know, you've got your bombs, you've got your removal, you've got your evasion, you've got your filler. It has everything in all departments. And I'm actually I'll be very happy to uh, to play this color. Yeah, I'm. A bit wary sometimes because there's a lot of one toughness in black, which makes it a bit fragile. But what I also really like is the board wipe that just kills all the small stuff, which a lot of things will be. Yeah, so that's really cool. I think black will do a lot in this pre release, and I always really like black already because. Like we said before, the flyers and a good removal, and now again, it has everything. Yeah, and to put the cherry on the cake is, of course, having the single most powerful bomb in the entire set with the 6 6 flying trampling demon that also surveys for two life. Amazing. Well, if you like these videos, you want to help us make more, head on over to patreon.com slash budgetmtgdex and consider donating as little as a dollar a month. It really helps us out, be able to make more videos, and we really appreciate our current patrons for making these videos possible. So thanks a lot for that. Also, join us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. These are the socials. This is where you get in touch with us. This is where we post pictures, comments, information, and you can talk to us there. Just message us, let us know what you think, and we will let you know what we think. Uh, also, subscribe to us here on YouTube for the most powerful decks and advice everyone can afford. And if you do, don't forget to hit the little bell button because then you'll be notified when the video comes out. You'll be part of the notification squad. And uh, these videos are coming out one after the other pretty fast. So if you're notified, you'll know exactly when these videos are coming out. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'm David. I'm Stefan. This was Budget MTG Decks.